Hey, got a new power supply on the bench here to have a look at. We've got a uh, Hewlett Packard E3612A. These are actually part of a, um, a bit of a series. There's three of them in the series. There's a few others that have a similar part number, but they've got different uh, layout and different voltage, um, like bipolar output or tracking supply. In this range, the uh, E361XA range, uh, there's three power supplies. There's an E3610A, E3611A, and this one, the E3612A. If you look back in the um, the video history, you'll see where I work on a uh, E3611A, bring it back to working condition where the capacitors have exploded and dropped their guts all over the PCB, need some extensive repairs. But um, this one is the uh, the high voltage version. So the uh, E3610 is actually a 0 to 8 volt um, at 3 amp and a 0 to uh, 15 volt at 2 amp. Then the E3611 is a uh, 0 to 20 volts at 1.5 amps and 0 to 35 volts at 0.85 amps. And the, then you have this one, the high voltage one, the 0 to 60 volts at 0.5 amps and 0 to 120 volts at 0.25 amps. So um, yeah, 120 volts is uh, good for um, testing stuff where you need some like high voltage, like maybe some small mains rated stuff or some tube amplifier stuff or anything where you need a higher voltage but um, not too much current. So let's open this thing up, see what's inside, make sure it's all in uh, good condition, make sure there's nothing exploded or anything, and uh, see what makes it tick. So uh, to get in, it's just these uh, little tabs. you got to get your screwdriver in there and just give it a bit of a tweak lever it open a bit. There's actually no screws to get inside these things, they just snap together. So turn it over and we've got the same on the uh, bottom. Get that and then the last ones and that should come open. So we'll lift the lid and see what we got. Alright, so that's looking pretty clean inside. I don't have any complaints there. There's no leaky capacitors, no burnt out components, nothing obviously bad. This stuff that's on the side of the capacitors, that's not leaking. That's just some silastic, like some uh, silicon corking, whatever that's used to hold the capacitor so they don't vibrate loose. Um, if they vibrate around too much because they're kind of big and heavy, they can uh, break the legs over time and uh, come loose and then you're going to have a, have a problem. But that glues them in place so they don't do that and that's so that's a nice touch uh, so the basic layout is that we've got the IC connector in the back with the fuse holder integrated it comes around to the power switch comes back to the transformer one thing to note about these units in the transformer uh, these are not a switchable there's no switch on the back to switch the input voltage range and they're not a universal voltage so this is an option OE9 is a sticker on the side as well that says what it is this is a hundred volt version uh, if you're in America, you'll be using a 115 volt version. In Europe, Australia, you'll be using a 230 or 240 volt version. Just be sure that you get the right version if you're buying from overseas. If you buy one from America and take it to Europe, you plug it in, you're going to have a bad time and let the smoke out. It's, yeah, it's not something you can just uh, plug anything into any voltage. You've got to make sure you've got the correct option. So just be sure of that. You can find the information in um, the manual from the uh, Keysight website. So moving on, we've got the uh, main bridge rectifier here. We come to the uh, big uh, filter capacitor, that's a 250 volt job. Uh, over here we've got two small bridge rectifiers. They've got some capacitors as well and they're feeding the uh, voltage regulators here. A bipolar power supply for the op amps. This one I believe is probably doing the front panel, the power supply for the front panel. These op amps are what's uh, actually doing the controls of the uh, current and voltage. So you set something on the front panel, they'll measure that. They'll measure the uh, output and they'll adjust the the pass transistors here so that it all matches, so that what you set and the output are equal. Uh, the output comes around to this this uh, capacitor. That's a filter capacitor. We've got some more um, protection capacitors and a protection diode down in there. And this resistor here is the main f uh, the main current sensing resistor. So that's how the op amps know what current's being put out there. Come to the uh, binding post on the front. We've got two Borns. Uh, multi-turn pots, I think they're 10 turn pots, good quality units there and we've got the front panel display board there with the uh, voltage and the current calibration uh, pots for the uh, display. These ones are the high and low current and then for the uh, the switch here, this you press that switch in it will show you what current is going to be put out so there's a calibration for that too. So that's pretty much all we got. 
Um, let's get this thing hooked up to the uh, the load tester and um, and the multimeter and see how it performs. All right, so let's give this thing a bit of a test. Um, I'm going to go through the performance testing and then the calibration uh, just to show you how it's done. Uh, so I've got my load tester here, my electronic load, and that's hooked up to the uh, the power supply through a uh, 0 0.1 ohm uh, load resistor or like a uh, a shunt resistor. Uh, we're not measuring that just yet. We will use that in a in a moment. But at the moment, we're going to be measuring directly across the uh, output terminals to the uh, multimeter up here. So what we want to do first is uh, turn everything on. I've got this already set to uh, a load of 0 0.5 amps, which is uh, correct for this this unit. We'll turn that down a little bit, and then uh, we'll turn this one on. And we've got to test between this be this being on and this being off. And if the voltage is um, greater, the voltage difference is greater than a certain value, then uh, it's not regulating correctly, and there's a problem. So we want that this to be this voltage to show almost no change whatsoever. So uh, if I turn the voltage up for this uh, power supply, we want to turn up to 60 volts. Um, I'm not going to be looking here because I haven't calibrated this. I'm going to be looking at the actual output voltage. Hopefully you can see that there, but I'll set it to 60 volts. We got nearly 60, uh, just over 60 there. Oh, one tiny little touch. Come on. Give me that magic number. There we go, 60.005. So if I then turn the uh, load on, 60.005, 60.006, under load, and off load, 60.006, it's regulating perfectly. So that's uh, 0 0.51 amp there. I could probably uh, adjust that slightly. Uh, 5 amp there, 0 0.5 amp. And uh, the regulation there is, it's not even, once it settles after the transient, it's not even... Uh, not even caring about it. So that is perfect. Test one passed. Okay, test number two. We have to test that the uh, unit is going to remain stable under a varying input uh, voltage condition. So we're running at uh, 90 volts, just about 90 volts. Uh, we're going to go 10% below and 10% above the uh, nominal line voltage. So at the moment we're at uh, 100 volts as nominal line voltage here in Japan. So 10% below that is 90 volts. And we've got a 60.007 volts. So if I turn that up to 110, and uh, we are still at 60.007. That's uh, close enough. It has to be within 0.01 percent, and uh, that's looking pretty good to me. So test two is passed. All right, test three. Uh, we're doing a load transient test. So I've got this set up to uh, turn on and off at uh, one kilohertz, and uh, we're running at 0.4 amp, 58. Well, it says 60 volts. It says here 58.5. This this display needs to be calibrated, but uh, I've got it hooked up to the scope, and um, it's going to be a bit hard to see the scope on the screen. Uh, so I'll put a screenshot up, and you can see there. It's there's no there's nothing there. It's it's down the grass. It should um, well if if it wasn't working correctly, there'll be a, uh, a quite a, a significant bump in the middle of the screen there. But um, yeah, this thing is uh, is looking pretty good for the load transient. There's no no variation there at all. So uh, that means test three is passed. All right, fourth test. We're testing the PARD or periodic and random deviation. That's basically ripple and noise. So I've got my test load here hooked up. Uh, this is a 120 ohm resistor, 60 watt, which is uh, correct for this one. For the other two the uh, in the series, the 3610 and 3611, we use a 2.6 ohm and a 13.3 ohm respectively. But this one's 120 ohms, so I've got that hooked up and I'm measuring the AC across um, the load here and I'm getting 0, 0.000. We want less than, uh, what does it say here, 200 microamps. So zero across, zero millivolts. There's a little bit of a ripple there, but that's probably noise from me waving my arms around. Um, basically zero across the load there means there's zero, uh, zero current, zero AC current there. So that's awesome. Test four, passed. 
All right, test number five. We're doing another PARD test, but this is a peak-to-peak uh, -peak rather than RMS. So I've got this hooked up to the scope. I'll put a screenshot on the screen now so you can see what's going on. Uh, you can see there the peak-to-peak -peak value is 35.2 millivolts. If we uh, do some ohms law through 120 ohms, uh, that will come to about 0.29 milliamps. Um, we want it to be less than 2 milliamps, so that is also perfect. So that's all the uh, CV, the constant voltage modes, uh, tested. Um, I'll do the same test again in constant current. I won't bore you with the uh, the same test, just in a slightly different mode to make sure it's all um, good. And uh, then we'll head on to the calibration. All right, all the performance tests come out good, so there's nothing surprising there. Thumbs up, that's awesome. Uh, so now we're on to the calibration. So the first test we have to do is we've got to turn these both voltage and current to the maximum, and uh, we put it across a uh, 0 0.1 ohm 10 watt resistor. So that's what I've got here, and I've measured that as 0 0.1. 1020 ohms. So that's uh, pretty much spot on there. And then we've got to turn it on and we want this to read 0 0.53 volts. So we've got to adjust uh, R31, yep, which is down in here. You probably can't see it because it's behind the panel, but if I hold my tongue at the right position and twiddle this dial, uh, about there. 0.53. That's, yep, there we go. Oh, perfect. Nice. All right, so that's the high current range set. So uh, if we push the button into low current, oops, that one, then we want that to read 0.26, and we want to adjust R32. So, okay, I've got R32 there. There we go. So 0.2. 0.026 so come down a little bit there because we're nearly at 0.027 right about there nice awesome another thumbs up okay so we've got to dial in the uh, the milliamp meter here so to do that we take the value here 0.053034 volts and then divide that by our shunt resistor which is 0 0.1035 ohms and that comes to 0 0.512 so 0 0.512 so we've got a 512 here so I've got that set there already and take that 516543 uh, 512 right there done awesome Okay, voltage range. So I've got to set the voltage on the front panel. I've got this connected directly to the multimeter. I've got to set the voltage dial to read 120 volts here. And then I adjust R10 on the back of this panel. I've got the screwdriver just sitting there now. Until that reads the same. So if I turn that down, that'll do it. And I've got to dial this in. There we go. That's looking good. That's it, we're done. This thing is working really well. I'm actually really happy with it. The uh, readings are better than what's specified in the manual. It's nice and stable. It's working really well. I actually think for the first time in the history of this channel, we're not going to replace a single capacitor. So um, that's going to go on the bench, be put back to use, and it's going to work quite well, I think. I'm really happy. So um, that's pretty much it. That's all we got for this video. Hope you found that informative and maybe even a bit entertaining. Got more videos coming in the future, so stick around, and we'll see you then.